A total of 160 inmates wrote the 2020 matric exams. 86.2% of them passed. This is the highest pass rate as per the inmate performance trend. Correctional Services Minister Ronald Lamola announced this at Lukop Correctional Center on Thursday. Joining me now for more is the department spokesperson, Singabako Nomado. Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us this afternoon. So despite an unprecedented year, inmates writing a matric achieved an excellent pass rate. To what do you attribute this? Amazing results indeed. Uh, and we can only be proud as a department and uh, all credit must go to inmates, educators and correctional officials who really worked hard. Um, 2020 academic year was not an easy one. We all know what COVID-19 did. It disrupted um, the normal life, everything that we usually do. As, uh, as correctional services, it was a matter of saying, okay, how do we recover from it? Um, I'm talking about the curriculum um, recovery plan that all our schools had to come up with, and that indeed has worked, and also extra effort that inmates had to put in, um, and, and extra classes studying in their cells until very late at night, even uh, classes over the weekends. And the results are clear. If you see the performance, it does say to us there's something good which is happening. Hence, we intend continuing from this. We fully understand that there are always challenges but for us, that is never an excuse. We just have to really work hard. Has the Correctional Services Department seen a notable difference in terms of conduct and rehabilitation between inmates who take part in education programs and those who don't? Absolutely no doubt about it. Inmates who partake in various rehabilitation programs tend to behave differently and they hardly come back to our facilities merely because they've committed other offenses other, uh, after being placed out. Hence, we always encourage inmates to say, you've got to use your time at behind bars purposefully so that um, you can really, you know, redefine of who you are, you know, take charge of that second chance. Hence, then we say education must be the pillar of rehabilitation. Even those who may say, look, I may not have that strength in terms of formal education, but there are other programs, our TV programs, and also even uh, your skills, uh, your soft skills, where we channel some inmates to. So th this is all about, you know, redefining um, um, a person to say, look, yes, you did a mistake, but now it's all about correcting that, giving you a new purpose in life so that when a person is out, you know, even when you walk out there, people can see that, you know what, this is now a different person. So that even the investment that the state does to correctional services does bear fruits. We don't want to get more people coming to our facilities, but those who've been inside, therefore, must go out and make a difference. How are you going to get more inmates to take part in education programs and specifically in the matric program? It's all about, you know, reaching out to inmates, persuading them, and upon admission, when you, we work on what is called correctional sentence plan, this is where we identify those who say, look, you dropped out at grade 8, grade 9, or even grade 4. Therefore, it is an opportunity for you, you know, to finish um, a formal schooling or even take it further in terms of tertiary studies. We then say, okay, we do have, you know, full-time classes. You know, you've got to then, therefore, enroll, you know, for those classes, and then, and, and then, and then take it further. But to also even reach out to others to say, even if let's say education may not have been a priority, but when they see us do well, when they see some of the people that they were with, you know, doing extremely well, you know, when they're out there. We've produced lecturers, we've produced um, uh, artisans, we've produced, you know, specialists in different areas. They get motivated. Hence, it's it's very important for us to work with different stakeholders and also even, you know, pick up those who are really doing well to say, look, go back there just to encourage others so that they can see value, you know, in formal education. And by doing so, others do get encouraged and then they enroll for formal education. For those achieving a bachelor's pass this year, what are the prospects for further study while in prison? We've made it possible for inmates never to wonder to say, okay, what now after completing matric? Because uh, we've got um, um, more than 12,000 inmates who are doing education, different streams. Those who then want to um, take it further in terms of tertiary studies, uh, we do have um, classrooms. We have 
laptops uh, with internet connection and uh, they can even um, liaise directly with their lecturers you know they can receive emails but it is under a controlled environment at no point therefore you may say look i had uh, I had wishes of taking my studies even up to a PhD level, but I couldn't do it merely because I was in a correctional facility. We've eliminated all of that. Even now, our formal uh, education, like from grade five, six up to grade 12, we are migrating towards even an, on, an online platform. We can see, you know, how things are changing out there. COVID-19 has really redefined the manner in which schooling and learning, you know, you know, should be pursued moving forward. So we don't want to um, um, uh, be stuck behind or remain behind others when we see that, you know, things are moving the other direction. As correctional services, we have a duty and a responsibility to make it a point that the inmate behind bars, over 141,000, do realize that, you know what, in education, there is hope. Thank you very much for your time. That was Correctional Services Department spokesperson Sinkabako Kamalo.